Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to News Dose. And, you know, there's been a lot of questions, uh, a, a lot of concern for physical media in 2024. Several different things have happened this year that kind of begs the question of whether or not physical media, or in this case, whether or not physical games have a future. As a physical collector myself, this is something that's incredibly important to me. But yes, those days do look numbered as another domino fell today. So we'll talk about all of that. Then also a PlayStation 5 exclusive that's seemingly heading over to Xbox sometime soon. Uh, this is a game that I would highly recommend, so do stay tuned for all of that as well. Uh, before we get started, though, if you like this type of content, do make sure to subscribe. I'm here every Monday through Friday, and it's a great way to stay up to date with all of the daily gaming news. Also, if you'd like to support my Patreon as well, I do have a link in the description below. I don't promote it often, but it really is just such a huge help to this channel. So thank you to all of my supporters. I truly, truly do appreciate you. With that said, though, Let's just go and jump right into things, starting off with Little Big Planet 3. I mean, really, speaking of the digital age, a big part of that is online gaming and preservation. How exactly do you preserve a game that has a large multiplayer aspect or tie-in? I mean, look at something like Little Big Planet, which brought that play, create, share genre to life. Its community is such a huge part of that series. You can create and share whatever kind of content that you can come up with in Little Big Planet. But we've seen it happen already. After a while, once Sony finds that something is no longer financially viable, they'll shut things down. And then all of those user creations that fans worked so hard on are just simply gone. And that's exactly what just happened to Little Big Planet 3. You can see Sony's official statement here, which reads, Due to ongoing technical issues which resulted in Little Big Planet 3 servers for PlayStation 4 being taken offline temporarily in January of 2024, the decision has been made to keep the servers offline indefinitely. All online services, including access to other players' creations for Little Big Planet 3, are no longer available. User generated content stored locally on your PlayStation 4 will remain available. Any new user generated content you create can be played on your PlayStation 4, but not shared. Offline features such as the campaign will remain playable. So, I mean, this is a big blow to the Little Big Planet community, and I think even more so than what we've seen from past games shutting down within the series. And the reason I say that is because there's nothing to fall back on this time. This isn't the same situation as something like Little Big Planet 2 going offline, because at least back then, you still had the third game. This time, though, there's none of that. This is it for those classic style of Little Big Planet games and its user generated content. This is truly the end of an era, or at least for the time being. Now, hopefully, there will be a Little Big Planet 4 game eventually. I'm kind of hoping Media Molecule will go back to this series now that they're finished up with Dreams. Uh, but until then, you know, this is it for Little Big Planet user generated content. Now, with that said, if you do have interest in these series, uh, do kind of understand they're still great games worth playing for their stories alone. Now, moving on here, Warhorse Studio teased new game announcement last week, and the speculation was absolutely correct. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, as expected, is now 100% official. They dropped a trailer yesterday that revealed some new snippets of gameplay, but it mostly showed off its story and visuals. Of course, it keeps that realistic tone that the first game was so well known for, and that really is the thing about Deliverance. The reason this series stands out compared to other RPGs is because of its focus on a more realistic setting. Most games of this style leans more into those fantasy elements, and it's nice to see something just a little bit different. You can kind of describe it as more of a simulation experience for the Middle Ages. Now, Deliverance 2 is set for an undetermined 2024 release, which I assume will be late 2024. My guess is that it'll probably be a big holiday release, and its price tag, I'd say, kind of backs that up. This is a $70 AAA title, but if you are interested, it will be available for PC, PlayStation 5, and the Xbox Series. More so, if you've yet to play the first game, it's actually on discount right now over on Steam. You can get it for just $6 as of the making of this video. That's an absolutely fantastic price for this type of game, and even though I've not tried it out for myself, I have heard that it runs fairly well on the Steam Deck. You can allegedly play it at 40 frames per second. 
Okay, so let's go and talk about this physical media situation, though. This really has been an ongoing story since last year with reports that Best Buy was going to shy away from physical media in 2024. That ultimately proved to be true to an extent, which we'll come back to that here in just a moment. But now we're also hearing news that Target will be doing the same thing as well. This was posted up by President of Physical Media over on Twitter, and they said, Exclusive. Target sources are telling me they reportedly will stop selling physical media in the store and online by 2025. Now, I don't really think that this is overly surprising just because we've already seen it happen with Best Buy. I believe that was just the first domino and more is still to come. In fact, last year, there were also some reports that Walmart would be doing the exact same thing. And while I can't speak for everybody, I have noticed that my local Walmart has definitely scaled their physical DVD and Blu-ray sections way back in just the past few months. So really, I don't think they're gonna stick around physical media for much longer either. Now, as for Target though, they actually did confirm the news, though there is a silver lining here, much like the Best Buy reports last year. This is Target's response to IGN, where they said, Based on our guests' shopping patterns and broader industry trends, we're transitioning the limited assortment of DVDs we carry in our stores to Target.com, where guests will continue to find thousands of titles. Moving forward, we'll offer select DVDs in stores when they are newly released or during key times throughout the year, when they are more popular, like for gift-giving during the holidays. So there's really a few different things to kind of take note of here. One is that they will still offer DVDs, which I assume also means Blu-rays. It's kind of irritating that people still call Blu-rays DVDs, but you know, nonetheless, they will still offer movies and shows just mostly on their online website. So physical media won't necessarily just die because of this, but they will have a lot less reach, which is still a major blow in its own right. Now, thankfully, some of that will be addressed because it sounds like new releases will still be available in stores, which is nice to see. By this point, though, I mean, you know, physical media for movies and shows are much more niche, and that's really why these retailers are willing to move away from them. You know, digital is the primary way that most people consume their movies and shows now. But the other thing to understand here, and, and this is the important part for us gamers, Target will still sell physical games in stores. Now that doesn't mean that this story isn't important for gamers because it absolutely is, but for the time being, just like Best Buy and Walmart, Target will still offer physical games. There are still enough gamers out there that buys physical media to make it worthwhile for these retailers. So that's the silver lining here. For you physical collectors out there, just keep doing what you're doing. As long as there's still a healthy percentage that buys physical media, that makes it more difficult for retailers to completely drop them. Now, at the same time, though, it's hard not to notice that this is an ongoing trend. Digital games might not necessarily be as dominant as digital movies are, but their trajectory seems to be pointing in the same direction. Both PlayStation and Xbox now offers digital-only console options. So we have seen an increase in digital purchase throughout this generation, and... I, I think especially with that younger audience that's coming in, they heavily prefer digital media because that's how they've grown up. So while physical games are still here today, with each passing year, its slice of the pie gets smaller and smaller. And if it gets too small, we could see these retailers move away from games just like what they're currently doing with movies. They instead might opt for those digital cards that you can buy select games on. And if that happens, then console makers might then move away from physical drives as well. Because that means one of the biggest benefits that physical media gives them would no longer be there. Without that reach that retailers give them, then physical media is a lot less attractive for these console makers. It wouldn't be as financially viable for them, and, and that is something that Phil Spencer touched up on this year. He couldn't give a 100% guarantee that they'll forever offer a physical drive because if that market gets too small, then yes, something will have to give. At the end of the day, the way these companies look at it is that they're running a business, and they'll only offer it as long as it's a viable business plan for them. In fact, I'm sure they would probably prefer digital because they have more control over digital as opposed to physical. With all that said, though, if I were to make a prediction today, I think we will at least get one more console generation 
with physical media. I definitely say with PlayStation and Nintendo at the very least. I mean, Xbox is kind of the wild card here just because their emphasis on Xbox Game Pass, their user base is much more digital ready than the other two. Uh, but let me know what you all think about all this. Do you still buy physical media? And what do you think will happen next generation for all these consoles? Moving on though, speaking of Xbox, a very welcome PlayStation 5 exclusive might actually be heading over to the Xbox series sometime very soon. An ESRB rating for Kena Bridge of Spirits was spotted online today, and you know, we've talked a lot about this on the channel. More often than not, these ratings are a dead giveaway that an announcement is planned for sometime soon. Now that might take a few days, it could take a few weeks, or it could possibly even take a few months. It's hard to tell exactly when it will happen. Two games that comes to mind that took a little bit longer was the Castlevania Advance Collection and the Demon's Souls Remake. Ratings for both of those games were filed months and months in advance of their official announcement. So we knew about them well ahead of time, but it did take a while before we actually officially got that news. So there's no guarantee an announcement for Kena Bridge of Spirits will happen within the next few weeks. However, just like Hollow Knight Silk Song, I would kind of pay attention to the Xbox Summer Showcase. I think that that makes a lot of sense for an announcement like this, especially because this is a good game. Truthfully, it's probably one of the most impressive games visually even now. It's very Pixar-like, it's a stunning looking game, but more so, it's also a fun game. I do have the physical version for the PlayStation 5, and I highly recommend it. It has some Zelda elements to it, and it has a decent story as well. So if anything, it gets an easy recommend from me. Do keep an eye out for its announcement, but as always, when it does happen, of course, I will let you all know. Now, one last thing before I go. I bring you all Nintendo news today as well. You know, they've been super quiet this year, and I don't like that. Not at all. I'm hoping they'll be a little bit more active in the second half of the year. Uh, but in the meantime, they do have Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door right around the corner. It is set to release next month on May 23rd. I'm particularly very excited for this title, but we should get some major updates much sooner than that. It was just revealed that Paper Mario previews will go up on April 25th, so just next week, and the reviews will go live on May 21st. Now, the reason that this is interesting is just because Nintendo still hasn't confirmed whether or not the remake will actually have new content and exactly what features it'll have to offer. As one such example, something I'd like to know is will it have difficulty options? Will it have a challenging mode? Because, you know, that's something that Nintendo is infamous for not including. The recent Mario RPG, as an example, was overly easy. Still a good game, but definitely overly easy. And it'd be nice if Nintendo gave us Paper Mario Veterans the option for a more difficult option. I would love that, but if I'm being completely honest, I'm fully expecting they won't give us that option just because I know how Nintendo operates. But all I'm trying to say here is that we might get some answers for what this game has to offer as early as next week. So do stay tuned for all of that. Anyways, though, that's going to be it for this video. Again, do hit those buttons below if you like this type of content. But until next time, peace out.